for you to supply if you if you can't do it when they need it for. That's not them being cruel, it's just their customers demand that they supply on time, isn't it? You know, it goes all the way up the chain. Help you manage the replenishment of policies. How many, how many people in the room have over a thousand <coughs> item lines, product codes? Yeah, it's not unusual. How many over 5,000? Okay. So you're in the average because the average is between 1,000 and 5,000. Looking at each one of those and deciding, deciding what the replenishment policy is, is a very time consuming exercise. And again, we've just discussed that we don't have that. So looking at something like the forecasting systems that will take average usage and enable those to set them up automatically, almost, will give you the confidence to make the right decision. So it's easy, isn't it? That's all we're looking for, accuracy, up to date. But I think the other two are as important as anything else. Okay. As an, an IT person, a geek, nerd, call me what you like, okay? very easy for me to sit there late into the night, create software that does fantastic stuff. You know, every possible rule, permutation of if this and this and this and this but not this, do this. Will you understand it? Six months later, when it tells you to do something, you'll go, why the hell is it telling me to do that? So if it's not straightforward and easy to understand, actually, you'll find it very hard work in my experience. Okay? So you've got to be able to say, yes, I know that's the right answer. And it's got to give you the information to be able to justify what it's telling you to do. I had a customer um, actually about uh, a mile up the road. They rang me up and he said, James, I think we've got something wrong. Really? Why is that? He said, yes, we've just um, ordered, let me get this right, it was 2 billion cubic metres of timber. Okay? He ordered it from Latvia. The guys in Latvia didn't take the order, they'd sent them the purchase order. I was in that year, rang up and said, that's the next 14 years for the entire country. Do you really want it? How, why had that happen? Somebody set an item up and they got a unit of measure conversion the wrong way around. Okay? So instead of one to a thousand, they put a thousand to one. Great multiplier, nobody cross-checked it, come out with the end result and somebody had just gone purchase because they trusted the system. So, you know, you've got to be able to look at the numbers it's coming up with and say, is this right? And the reason for that is you will always be setting new product lines up. You know, you've got between 1,000 and 5,000 now, but they're not the same 1,000 and 5,000 you had two years ago, are they? So you will be setting new stuff up and you need to be able to do it quickly and easily. Efficiency. You know, um, it's a good question to ask. How many phone calls are involved in that process? I hate phone calls, internal ones. When you're on the phone to a colleague, you're not talking to a customer. That's not going to do. That's not going to be great for your sales going forward, is it? If your customers can't get hold of you because you're engaged because you're talking to a colleague, um, and 90% of the time when you're talking to a colleague, what are you doing? You're giving them information that you think they need to know, okay? Or you're asking for information that you need to know that they have. Okay. Third one is the most significant, is a lot of the time you'll find that you're checking information that you know to check that, it, to, that it's still up to date. That's the worst one of the lots. Because you've looked at a number on a screen, hmm, I better just talk to Fred and check that that's correct, because I don't want to make a promise based on it when something may be out of date. Okay. So too much in business today, people will not trust 
the systems giving them information, they want to cross-check it and cross-check it again. Why? Because they've been caught too many times. So it's, you know, that, that whole process should, should be easy and straightforward. Um, you should be able to get the information you need, you should be able to, to process it through quickly, ideally while you're on the phone. Okay? Because if you can answer the if you can say to the customer, you can have it next Tuesday, okay? You've got them, that 7% goes way up. If you come off the phone and you've got to then go back to them, we all know that modern communication, making a phone call is a challenge these days, isn't it? How many times do you get through to the person you need to talk to first time? It's not, not always there. So, let's look at some software. Because, how about you? go into the front screen. This is a modern ERP system for those that haven't seen anything like it before. So we're going into a role centre. And I'm in the role centre of somebody who's an order processor. I can see how many sales orders I've got. I can see you know, how many I've got that are late. I can see what outstanding credits there are. I can see my inbox, my calendar, my tasks to do. It's all there in one central point. I can see Sales and profit per key account. I've chosen to do it by customer because I'm in a sales role. If I'm in the inventory management role, I might choose to do it by item. Show me the item that's you know, got the worst stock position relative to demand, etc. Et so it's all there straight in front of me. Let's go into a list of sales orders and let's enter a new one. Click on customer. we don't have any of. So what are we going to do with that? We're going to say, well yes we want to proceed and they're over their credit limit, so maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. But let's have a look at how quickly we could then supply that bicycle. So this bicycle, as common with most, is made up of a set of parts. We have a couple of wheels, we have a chain, and a little bit short on time so I won't go through the whole detail of showing you. But it could be an item that we just buy in, that we want to know. So I'll go to something called order promising. And um, this software that I'm looking at, the demo software, is running 27th of the 1st of 2011. It's a little ahead of itself right now. The customer would really like us to ship it today, if, if at all possible. But we can't do that. So let's go and come. And the system has built in the, the possibility of doing available to price or capable to price. Difference between those two? Well, one will take time into account, okay? And if you have a, a fixed capacity, you have a fixed number of people working a fixed amount of time, capable to promise will actually make sure that you have, we have the time to do the assembly of the bicycle through the different work centres that it needs to go. But these days, workforces are becoming much more flexible. So you can say, okay, if we need to do some overtime, if we need them to work over, you know, work Saturday morning or whatever, we'll probably do that. So maybe available to promise is the one we want to do. Okay? Which will just purely take material availability right the back through, the way through any sub-assemblies or anything that we need to do to, to get where we go. Or incapable to promise. So it's immediately telling me that the early shipment date that I could do is the 16th of the 2nd. Middle of next month. Okay. I'm still in 